All right, here we have an energy monitor plugged into uh, an extension cord and a fan plugged into the energy monitor. You'll see that there is uh, a button for watts and volts, am volt amps. We're just going to be dealing with watts right now, learn about volt amps later. There's a setting for hertz and power factor. We won't have uh, that much of a power factor because we don't have like a big compressor or anything. Um, if you have a purely resistive load, there's, there's no power factor. That's for later. Um, there's a kilowatt hour and an hour button. This allows you to store data like over time, figure out how much energy something used and for how long it was running. And there's a volts and an amps button. So let's go ahead and put on watts. Nothing's running, so it should be zero unless there's a phantom load. Uh, some devices went off, aren't really off. Uh, they're sitting there waiting and pulling uh, um, some power. But in this case, our fan is totally off, so watts are gonna be zero. Uh, if we hit the Hertz button, it's going to be around 60 Hertz because we're in the U.S. Our grid is around 60 Hertz. Depending on where you're at, it'll be either 50 or 60 Hertz. Um, kilowatt hours. Uh, I've had this plugged in for a while, but I've had it off. So it's still zero kilowatt hours because it hasn't used any any energy, um, even, even though it's been plugged in. Um, I've had it plugged in for almost an hour. It's 0.8 hours. Uh, there's two versions of this energy monitor. One of them only keeps track of time that the load is on. The other one keeps track of time just the whole time it's plugged in. And the same for the energy use. Uh, it only keeps track of it when it's, when it's using energy. Um, this is the one I like because it's keeping track of when it's plugged in. Uh, volts, going to be about 120 volts because we're in the U.S. That's our grid. You might be higher, 220 uh, and then amps are going to be zero because we're not pulling anything. So let's come back to watts. I'm going to turn this fan onto low. And you'll see our watts move around a bit. And then they'll stabilize, uh, um, especially around here, around 56 watts is what this fan is taking. Uh, if we, you know, put it in a box and there's more bath pressure, it might be a, a little bit more than that. Um, our hertz are going to stay the same, about 60 hertz. Our kilowatt hours is still going to be zero because it hasn't been on for very long. Volts will still be around 120 volts or maybe 117 depending on where you're at. And now our amps will have a reading because we are pulling amps. So 120 volts by about uh, 0.5 amps would be about 60 watts. There we are at, at, uh, at 55 watts. And then if I turn this up, you'll see the wattage going up accordingly. So now this fan is on high. Um, we're pulling a lot more watts. Uh, you'll see that Hertz stayed about the same. We still have zero kilowatt hours just because it hasn't been plugged in long. Our volts still about 120, but now our amps will be higher, 0.6 amps. If I leave this in for, if I leave this on for a while, you'll see this kilowatt hours start to build. Uh, there are some benefits to that because some devices use different uh, uh, amounts of power at different times. For instance, your refrigerator, sometimes it might be 500 watts, sometimes it might be 50 watts as it goes through its different cycles. So leaving it on the kill, leaving this plugged in and using the kilowatt hour setting, you can figure out, let's say after 24 hours, how much energy your refrigerator has used, even though it's been at different watts throughout the day. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this plugged in. Um, maybe I'll throw up a screenshot at the end. Thanks. All right, we've left it on a little longer and we're finally at 0.01 kilowatt hours. Uh, it looks like we've gone another about 0.1 or 0.2 hours since the last time we looked.